Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, if you are new here, my name is Asia. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you very much. I am so glad you are loving the content. Um, here we do fashion, beauty, and post-cancer wellness. Um, I wanna talk to you guys today about the signs of colon cancer. Now, these may not necessarily mean that you have colon cancer. These things were in succession and they were all clustered up, I guess you would say, and which led to my diagnosis of colon cancer. So these are just things that you should watch out for. And if you are experiencing any of these things, especially more than one of these things at the same time, then you know, you know that's your sign to get checked out. A lot of people in the comments have let me know that they were afraid to get um checked and they had uh, appointments that they never went to and i understand how scary it may be but you cannot be scared to get checked up because with cancer the earliest detection is the best the earlier you catch these things the better chances that you have now jesus can fit heal anybody I've heard of people that had stage four cancers or whatever, and they were they're in remission. So there's nothing too hard for God, but you don't want to get to stage four. I was at stage two and all and almost took me out of here with the stress. So I couldn't imagine being at stage four. So I want to do a trigger warning. Um, this will be talk of bowels and stool and cancer and things like that. So if you are squeamish to things like that i want to let you know now that that will be a part of the video so i'm going to do my makeup while i talk to you guys about these signs of colon cancer so you already know the deal you already know who in the house <laughs> y'all going to hear her running and screaming back and forth so So one of the signs that I had colon cancer was um, chronic constipation. This fooled me because I've always had constipation. When I was little, I, my grandmother used to have to give me enemas and I would always be on the toilet. I would be trying to hide it. I would be banging my foot on the back of the toilet because it, I would be trying to push to get it out. So I always used to have to get enemas because I've always, since I can remember, had a problem with my bowels. So me being constipated was never like a red flag or anything for me because it was something that I literally dealt with my entire life. But also, my mom cooked for us every night. So I don't want to say it was the food because food, even from... The early 2000s, I want to say, the food is not even the same as it was when I was young. So the food wasn't the same from when my mom and, and my aunts was young. So I can't even really say back then what had that effect on my bowels. It was just, I guess it was chronic or something that for some reason I just could not release the way everybody else could. Even growing up, I would remember hearing people go to the bathroom uh, once or twice a day or every other day. And I'm like, wow, like I never went to the bathroom like that. It could be once every three days. Um, and it was so far in between that I didn't, I would go to the bathroom and be like, Last time I did like that's how far and few in between it would be of me using the restroom. So I had no idea that that eventually, as I got older, would affect me in the way it did. Now, my I had other things going on, so me not using the bathroom regularly, I want to say it kind of maybe slipped through my parents' fingers because it was other things going on. My little brother had asthma. I had my own situations going on. So 
while I, I was in and out of the hospital, my brother was as well because he had bad asthma when he was little. So it was like certain things just fall through the cracks. Then my little sister came. So now this is three kids. Like she's okay. But, you know, me and my little brother, we had a lot going on. So I want to say it just fell through the cracks on why it was never really addressed why I went to the bathroom like that or why I always had to get help essentially to use the restroom. So keep in mind that chronic constipation is not normal. If you have a problem going to the bathroom, if you have issues uh, moving your bowels, that's something that you want to get checked out. The next thing that I had to deal with um, was blood in my stool. Now, I had blood in my stool months, like literal months before I was diagnosed. It might even have been a year. I can't even remember, but it wasn't it wasn't recent that I could remember. But it was a while that it took me to get diagnosed after I had the blood in my stool. See, colon cancer can typically be a slow growing cancer. It's not you pop up with colon cancer within three months. Like it's a slow growing cancer. It could take months or years for the tumor to become malignant. And it can take even longer months or years for you to be even diagnosed or for it to even be detectable. So all of these things that has happened to me leading up to it, I would never have known because Everything was so far and few in between. Like I said, the bowel thing was, that was my whole life. So I did not factor that in. Now, when I got the blood in the stool, I did Google that because, you know, everybody knows that blood in your stool can be a sign of cancer. But it was also, it could be blood from something that you ate, coloring from something that you ate. Um, also from straining, you could have blood in your stool per, per Google, <laughs> you can have blood in your stool. And I was straining to use the restroom. So I just chalked it up to me straining and going to the bathroom. Cause again, who's going to put cancer in their name in the same sentence? Not me. And I did not have any other symptoms other than that blood being, and it wasn't a lot, but it was enough that I was able to see it. And thank God I was always taught from a kid to always check your stool. Never just wipe yourself and then get up and flush the toilet. You always check your stool. So, I, you know, you glance, you're not digging on in the toilet, but you glance and I saw it and I'm like, so it was enough for me to notice it. And, you know, I Googled it and did my own diagnosis and decided it was just for me straining and I just went on from there. So low iron and anemia can also be signs of colon cancer. I'm not saying that everybody who's anemic has colon cancer. What I'm saying is in addition to all of these other symptoms, they could be a sign of colon cancer. I'm not a doctor. I'm just giving you, these are my personal experiences and information from my oncologist. So it's not just me just, you know, giving my opinion on what I think you guys have. I'm just giving you my personal experience of what happened to me, what led up to my diagnosis and information from my oncologist of things to look out for. Anemia can be, a, uh, can aid in you being tired or fatigued. And anemia can also be a late sign of colon cancers because there are early signs and there are late signs. And anemia could be also a late sign of colon cancer, depending on where the cancer has spread to. Um, I've been anemic for a while now. I'm not really sure 100% where, like on my timeline that I became anemic, was it something that happened before or after I got cancer? It's been so much these last couple of years, I cannot even, I literally can't tell you guys. So, 
that's the only thing about doing these sit down videos. I be so into what I'm saying that I don't even be doing my um process right. Because I was then supposed to put this blush on. Y'all hear the princess? She want to get in the video too. They don't want to see you little bits. I'm going to use the Danessa Color Fix Mattes. This is a pigment. It's in chocolate. This might be a little too dark right now for the weather, but I don't feel like no whole bunch of stuff. I just want to do a really quick, like, monochromatic look. So I'm just going to use this, and I'm not really going nowhere. I'm just doing it because it's therapeutic for me to talk to you guys and do my makeup. It's easier for me to talk. So I'm going to put, I'm going to start with those two dots. Rub them in. Ooh. That might not have been a good idea. Hold on, hold on, hold on, girl. Hold on, girl. I don't know. I kind of look like I've been bruised. They said you can use it on your cheek and stuff, but maybe I didn't do it right. I only put one little dot. look like they look cute because little nose i've been blending for dear life i'm sorry if you guys can hear brooke but it's just me and her today so i got the princess so and you know you can't if anybody has kids you know you can't be five minutes by yourself yeah staying on the subject of stools Narrow stools and slim stools can also be a sign of colon cancer because it could be a sign of a blockage. Um, when your stool is like consistently, I'm not saying one or two, consistently really slim, really thin, um, abrupt changes in your stool, constipation one day, diarrhea the next day, and it's a consistent thing. Um, pay attention to the size of your stool because when it is really slim and it's consistently slim, that could be a sign of a blockage in your colon and you do not want that. Um, the blockage could be, this doesn't look bad. I don't really see much of nothing, but what I do see, it's not bad. Let me put a little bit more on. Um, that could be the tumor blocking your colon as no indication of the size the size of the tumor because my tumor was projected to be one size when they got in to go take it out it was a whole other size way bigger than what it showed on the scan and it was attaching itself to other places in my you know in my body so thank god that it was able to be removed and there was no oh this is pretty it's definitely too dark for right now, but, you know, I'm not going nowhere. No, I'm not going to use that on my bottom. I'm going to just use this dark color in this Mario palette to put down here. But consistent changes in your bowel movements, um, consistent changes in the size of your bowels, of your bowel movements, those are possible indications of colon cancer. Jaundice, the yellowing of the skin and or eyes. Now, when I was young, they taught us in school that jaundice and the yellowing of the skin or eyes was usually an indication of someone having sickle cell. So it wasn't, again, until I was diagnosed that I found out that jaundice could also be a side effect of colon cancer. However, this would be categorized as a late side effect of colon cancer because it involves the cancer spreading. This would involve your liver. So that means the cancer spread from your colon through your bloodstream to your liver. Now, when I was, after I had my tumor surgery and I was diagnosed with stage two, they told me that it was a possibility 
I'm still trying to figure out how this was a possibility. I just thank God that it wasn't the case, but they never told me what actually happened for this to even be an issue that my to my cancer may have traveled through my bloodstream to my liver. I'm not sure if it was my levels or numbers or what the case, because I wasn't yellow. I didn't have yellow eyes. I'm, I'm not really sure where they got that from, but I was told that it was a possibility that my cancer had traveled to my liver, which was absolutely terrifying. But thank you, Jesus. That was not he didn't order any of those steps. My steps were literally ordered from the time that I found out all the way to the end. These extra things that are lingering on, I guess these are, I don't want to say reminders because I don't need a reminder of cancer. Like I, I know, trust me, I don't need to be reminded, but I guess I'm not finished on my journey. So these things come along with me until it's revealed what it is that I'm supposed to be or supposed to change or whatever it is. Like when I tell you guys right now, I am in such a period of transition and I'm trying to think of the word. It's not just, I guess the best way to put it would be loss. I'm literally so lost right now. I feel like I'm standing in the middle of a field and nobody's there. And you know how you be outside and you're you're driving down a long road and it's all mountains and stuff, but no street lights and it's dark and you got to put your high beams on. That's how I feel, except I'm not in a car. I'm just standing. And everywhere I look, it's just, I don't see anything. I'm just literally in a state of just being lost right now. Maybe these things are supposed to travel, are supposed to travel with me until I figure out my destination or what I'm supposed to be doing or learning from all of this. So incomplete bowel movements. If you go to the bathroom and it's like you still feel a heaviness. Like you guys ever go to the bathroom, and I know this video is a bit much. Please don't be eating no snacks or nothing while you're watching it because this ain't that type of video. But you ever go to the bathroom sometime and it literally feel like you lost weight? It's like that's how you're supposed to be if when you move your bowels. If you go to the bathroom and it still feels like you have to go to the bathroom, you still feel heavy. You still feel uh, uh, like you have garbage or, or you know, junk still in your colon, still in your stomach. That means that you are not emptying yourself the way you're supposed to. And I've had those feelings. I just figured, uh, you know, again, constipation, um, not eating enough greens, not eating enough roughage, which is also the case because you have to put things in your body to clean it out you can't just eat bread and carbs and all those things that are just sitting there and there's nothing to flush it out there's nothing to move it through your colon so that's where your greens come from your salads your smoothies those kind of things um staying hydrated that helps move your bowels along The biggest thing I would say is your bowels. Keep a track of how you go to the bathroom, how often you go to the bathroom. Also, pain or swelling in your sides. I did not have this until the absolute end. If you have a swelling, a lump, or you know, constant pain, severe or light, in your sides, get it checked out. That could be backed up stool, which is extremely dangerous. Um, that could be a tumor. You just never know what it is or what it could be. So you always want to get those things checked out. Sometimes we hate going to the doctors because I know I'm one of them and I will wait till the last minute to go to the doctor. If you have any symptoms, your body talks to you. We just ignore it a lot of the times. Some people do, some people don't. 
I just started being that type of person that if something, if I feel something off, I'm going to the doctor. I got insurance, run it up. So sometimes it takes people, oh, I'll just, especially older people, oh, I'll just take a Tylenol, or I'll just take a Motrin, because child, we live, if you black, you already know, we live by Motrin, Tylenol, ginger ale, but that's not a diagnosis that's not a fix for serious issues you know you got a little cold or whatever your grandma give you a ginger ale turn on prices right and you fine but that does not help if we have a chronic or something serious that's happening extreme fatigue or tiredness no really really low energy can't do anything so what started the actual journey i was in the house and I was extremely, extremely tired. I'm never going to forget this night. It was daylight outside, six o'clock. I had to drag myself upstairs. I was so tired and I was hunched over holding my side because I was, it wasn't a severe pain, but it was painful. I was I having a pain in my side and I, this is what I mean by it. It wasn't towards the end. I was having a pain in my side. And I was extremely tired. Like I literally had no energy for nothing. I went upstairs and I remember taking a nap. When I woke up, it was still light. So I wasn't asleep that long. It was still light outside and I barely could lift my head off of the pillow. I was exhausted. Like I have never felt like that in my life. And it scared me. So I, again, this is how you know God was all involved because I really don't know how I got the strength because I was home alone. I don't know how I got the strength to drive myself to the hospital. I just thank God that the hospital is not even 10 minutes away from me. And I drove myself to the emergency room and when they took me back and ran tests and I remember I got um, uh, x-rays and all of this stuff. And they told, they came back and told me, now, mind you, in the tiny, tiny, tiny back of my mind, I thought it was cancer. When they came back and told me I had diverticulitis, it's like somebody came and like took all my clothes off, took all my skin off. It's like all of this weight was lifted off, off of me because I was the type of person I never played with cancer. I wouldn't even say the word. You know how they say, don't speak nothing on yourself. I wouldn't even say the word. Like that's how much I didn't play with it. And when they told me that I had diverticulitis, which is tiny holes in your colon, they told me that I would have to get a colonoscopy. After I got the colonoscopy, they said next steps would be for me to have that part of my colon taken out because it was a significant, apparently, it was a significant amount of my colon that had diverticulitis. Well, I didn't know at the time that was just an opening for them to find the actual cancer. This is how like God moved throughout the entire thing. And her not being able to finish the, 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 the colonoscopy because my, like whose colon is, is swelled up? Like who, whose colon swells? Like this, the whole thing was just, it was just like a, like a, like a movie, like a miracle or something. Like the way God moved during this whole time, like whose colon swells up? And she wasn't able to finish the colonoscopy, but she got as far as she needed to get to see the, the, the tumor. When she came out with the papers, I looked at the pictures, you know, they give you the images after your colonoscopy. I didn't know what I was looking at. So I'm not thinking nothing of it. My mom's looking at it. Her face didn't change. So I'm not thinking, you know, nothing of it. Not too long after that, I get a phone call to come into the doctor's office. Mind you, the phone call was eight o'clock that night. I should have known then. But of course, you know, me being oblivious to life, I should have known then, but I got a phone call eight o'clock that night from the doctor to come in to the office. 
eight o'clock that morning. I'm like, you know, still, I get there, me and my mom, this lady sits there and tells me that I got cancer. But like, who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? Like the whole thing was just, I mean, I've, I've, I've talked about the whole story um, on another video if you guys haven't seen it. So I'm not going to go into the whole thing, but it's just a day. Some days you just never forget, like the birth of your kids, your wedding days, stuff like that. I'm never going to forget that day. Like. The whole experience, I'm never going to forget. Like, I know times and everything. This is how much it has affected my life. So it's, that's why it's so important to me to just make sure that I'm telling everybody, like, you know, check yourself. Check on yourself. If you feel something, if your body's telling you something, if you have an inclination, nobody's saying uh, 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 what is the word? Um, claim it. But if you feel something, get it checked out. You know, it's early detection will save your life. Listen to me because, you know, I've been having this feeling, but it's been there for two years and I've just dealt with it. Like, no, if you're feeling anything, if your body is telling you something, please don't be afraid. Don't push it off because you got something else better to do. Go to the doctor and get yourself checked out. It is so important. Now, one of, this is a symptom that I don't remember experiencing, but it's a loss of appetite. If all of a sudden you have no desire to eat, no desire for food, uh, uh, a significant amount of weight loss out of nowhere that's unexplained. You're not on a diet. Your eating habit hasn't changed. You know, you're just losing weight and you don't understand. That can be a sign. Um, a lot of times when you have a tumor in your colon and, and or you have a blockage, it could affect your appetite. You're not, you don't want to put more food and you're not, eliminating everything the way you're supposed to so which probably leads to the nausea and the vomiting and the sickness and those episodes that some people who have colon cancer experience because you're not eliminating all of the foods you have old food sitting in there you have a tumor or a blockage or anything a mass that's sitting in your colon and it affects your appetite Unfortunately, I didn't have that <laughs> side effect because I was eating normal. I think the day that I went to the emergency room, that might have been the only day that I did not eat the way I normally eat because I was so sick that day and my side was bothering me so much that I, I, I wasn't thinking about food. That was the last thing on my mind was something to eat. So there are way more other symptoms um, that I'm sure that I'm leaving out again. I only spoke on the experiences that I had personally and from information that I received from my oncologist. Um, I'm not a doctor. I cannot, I'm not diagnosing anybody. I'm not telling you if you are constipated or if, um, you know, your side is hurting, you're having, you have colon cancer. What I'm saying is a lot of these symptoms, especially if you experience more than one, can be a sign of colon cancer. All I'm saying is do not ignore it. Do not shove, shrug it off. Do not pass it off as it being nothing. Nowadays, the way we are eating, the food that is given to us, the way that our food is in this day and time, we cannot take anything for granted. Um, I'm glad that mine was caught early. I wish I would have caught it even earlier. Um, but all I can do now is share my experience and to help anyone else that may be going through this, that may be afraid. Um, so many people in the comments have questions and I've gotten this question a lot, which is why I decided to do this video. What were some of your symptoms? So these are the symptoms that I experienced. 
So if you have any of these, definitely go get um, checked out. I want to thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys so much for your support. Um, I want to thank you guys for going and giving your testimonials for the Sephora Squad. For those of you that are new here, I applied for the Sephora Squad. And if you have not left a tutorial about me, um, it's just, you can leave anything from, I like her content. Um, if I inspired you in any way, um, whatever you want to say, I, I, I appreciate anything. Um, if you want to leave a testimonial, if you haven't, I'll put the link in the description box. I really, really appreciate all of you that have left your, your, um, testimonials already. I thank you so, so much. Please don't forget to like this video, comment below. If you guys have experienced any of these symptoms, if you guys have any more questions, I, again, I'm not a doctor, but I can do my research, ask my oncologist, I can help the best I can. So if you guys have any questions about anything I've mentioned in this video, um, please leave them below in the comments and I'll try my best to answer. Please subscribe if you're not already and turn on your bell notifications. See how I didn't forget. Turn on your bell notifications and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.